Here comes your bone. The next settlers were British, although they were constantly battling with the Spanish, French, and of course, pirates. The ratio of people to flamingos is one to 61. If we take the Bahamas and place it on a map of the US, Rafa, we're roaming to the Bahamas. That is correct. <laughs> hey Rafa, welcome to the Bahamas. You know what song I love, Jeffrey? Here's a hint. We were at the beach. Everybody had matching towels. Somebody went under a dock and there they saw a rock. But it wasn't a rock. It was a, oh, come on, do you know? Rock lobster! Huh. This song reminds me of our next topic, sustainable fishing. Can you explain what sustainable fishing is, Jeff? Sustainable fishing is leaving enough fish in the water for future generations and maintaining their habitats so that fishermen can continue fishing. But it's complicated because people eat fish. Many studies show we may run out of certain fish in less than 50 years. But we can turn the tide by taking action. What does it mean when people say that something is overfished. The simple explanation is when humans take more fish out of bodies of water than nature can replace, if overfishing continues, species will be driven to extinction. Let's take a look at a video comparing this issue in the U.S. and the Bahamas. Fisheries is where we go out and we catch things from the sea to eat. Um, that's what fisheries are. So that'll be going out to catch a lobster. It might be putting a line out and catching a fish or using a net. So we're going out and catching wild animals. Um, we also farm fish and that's called aquaculture. Um, so that's like farming fish in the sea. So when I talk about fisheries, I'm talking about going out and catching wild animals. The, the biggest root issue for the state of fisheries globally is definitely population increase. Uh, we're just having to pull so many more fish and shellfish and things like that out of the ocean now to feed the amount of people on Earth. The current trajectory we're on with things like habitat quality and fishery stocks uh, is not going in a good direction. I don't think there's a fish stock that is in much better condition right now than it was 50 years ago. Despite a lot better understanding of the environments that these fish are living in, and a lot better regulations, um, there's still just that growing pressure from the amount of people. One fishery that is not doing quite well at the moment is the fishery for conch. Um, these are these big marine snails that are iconic to the Bahamas. Our logo at Cape Luther Institute is the conch shell. It's on the Bahamian coat of arms. It's a really important thing for our country. But the numbers have gone down and down and down. And I can talk to any of my Bahamian friends. When we were kids, it was easy to find conch. It's a lot harder now. And the fishermen are finding it harder. Jamaica is about to ban the fishing of conch because their fishery is in, in a bad state. The same happened in Florida a long time ago. And in Florida, those populations have not recovered yet. There's still no fishery. And we're worried it might be happening here too. And it's really hard to know what to do because there are people who rely on this to make a living. And if you say that people have to stop fishing it completely, then those people no longer have a living. But equally, if we don't do something, they're going to be completely gone and then we lose that and so it's a really hard thing for decision makers like governments to decide what to do um, because whichever way you do it someone's going to lose out either it's the fishermen who are fishing now and have to stop or it's the next generation who aren't going to have anything to fish
One of the biggest problems we're facing right now in the Bahamas is poaching from other countries. So fishermen come into the Bahamas and will fish everything they can find. And because they're already breaking the law, they don't care about how big things are. They take little tiny fish, they take conch, they take lobster, whatever they can find, and they just take everything. And that problem stems back to the mismanagement of the fisheries in that country. So the fishermen were told, you can't fish in these areas anymore, or they ran out of fish and conch and lobster in those areas, and so now they come to the Bahamas. It didn't happen 10, 15, 20 years ago. Now it's happening more and more, um, and thankfully our defense force is doing a great job of trying to catch these boats, but they can't police the whole waters. We're an island nation. Most of our country is water, and it's really hard to police that. There aren't these boundaries in the oceans that we draw on maps, um, and so everything's connected, and if you don't manage it as a whole, you run into these problems. You know, conch is a really big part of the culture. You know, just going out and getting a few conch and making a scorch and sitting on the beach and taking time together. If you can't do that, you lose that whole social interaction. And so you're not just losing a fishery, you're losing a part of the culture. Let's take a look at this issue in the U.S. When I was studying marine biology, they were talking about the, the resources of the sea as being able to feed the masses. Uh, but, but what's happened is what scientists refer to as fishing down the food chain. The fishery starts and you're fishing the larger fish and eventually as you start to overfish it, the fish gets smaller. Once it becomes less economical to fish for that fish, the fishery itself switches to a different species. And when you move to another fish, you're not only then depleting another resource, but sometimes you're depleting the food source for the fish that you've already depleted so they don't have a chance to recover. The cod in New England is a great example where, you know, 200 years ago, 100 years ago, 50 years ago, that resource was, was looked at as endless. And, and now it's overfished to the point where there's a federal moratorium on the harvest of the fish. We're facing a situation now with striped bass the latest stock assessment says that the stock is now overfished because we've decreased what's called the spawning stock, and that's bad. Once you eliminate the big fish, those are the ones that produce the most eggs, and so you get a, a less of a reproductive success. And so if you have a variety of environmental conditions and biological conditions that give you a couple of years of unsuccessful spawning, all of a sudden the population can become in jeopardy. So we're going to see changes in the striped bass fishery because of the fact that it's just recently been determined that it's overfished. Striped bass in the, in the mid-Atlantic and New England is one of the most valuable recreational fisheries there is. I think the federal government estimates that it's worth something like $30 million a year in terms of the economic engine that it drives. Once the species is declared overfished, they have to put more stringent management measures in place. The tricky thing about fisheries management is what we're really managing is human behavior. Educating people to the fact that you want to let that fish live on so that the fishery is, is sustainable. That's convincing people that they should have a conservation ethic and being part of the solution, not part of the problem. We've been doing work to educate anglers to the best practices for handling that fish land the fish quickly, don't fight it to exhaustion. If you're going to take a picture, just lift the fish up, hold it horizontally, get that picture, release it um, quickly, limiting air exposure. The managers set a size limit and a possession limit, abide by that regulation. And think about, do I really want to keep this fish or do I want to contribute to the stock by, by letting it go? I think a lot of the 
policies that are being brought in are going to really benefit the Bahamas, but it takes time. So in 2009, there was a ban on hunting turtles. In 2010, I think there was a ban on hunting sharks. But it takes time for these animal populations to get better. Um, but I think we will see that. There's a big part of the Bahamas that's hopefully going to be protected soon. And all of these things give me hope. And I really think the Bahamas can be a kind of beacon for other countries to learn how to do this. That was bone chilling. That's right, Rafa. We all have to work together globally to ensure that fish remain on the planet. Thank you, Jeffrey, for taking time to roam with me. Check in again for our next adventure as we gnaw at an issue and see how it affects people in the US and another country on Rafa Roams the World, when not at home. Here's hoping you have a treat-filled time until we meet again. See you next time, Rafa.